Hello YouTube, it's Supernova, back with more Falcon 4 PMS. Today we're looking at ILS landing. As with the visual landing in the previous tutorial, we're 15 miles south of Kunsan Air Base at 2,500 feet, and on a heading of 360 degrees at 420 knots, but this time we're approaching runway 36 at night. A visual flight rules or VFR approach is flown with reference to outside visual cues, but when these cues are obscured by weather or darkness, instrument flight rules or IFR is used, and an instrument approach procedure is followed. The instrument landing system, or ILS, is the last part of the instrument approach procedure. The ILS cues are used until runway minima is reached, at which point the transition is made from an instrument approach to a visual approach. An ILS is a double radio emitter, the localizer emitting in VHF and the glide slope emitting in UHF. The localizer is usually located at the end of the runway and provides guidance to the runway center line. The emission cone varies between 3 and 6 degrees. The glide slope is usually placed offset to the runway center line at a distance from the runway approach and provides guidance to the optimum descent profile, which is usually 3 degrees. ILS procedures use two or more beacons along the approach track, usually an outer and an inner marker. The outer marker is most often placed six miles from the runway threshold, with the inner marker closer to the runway and near minima. The marker beacon lights on the horizontal situation indicator, or HSI, will flash when overflying them, flashing at a lower frequency for the outer marker, and a specific Morse code identifier will also be heard when above the markers. Note that because the approach to Kunsan Runway 36 is over water, the outer and inner markers are not present. We start by contacting Kunsan Tower to request an autonomous approach. To do that, press T to bring up the tower menu and select option 2. Good morning, Goblin 2, Kunasan Approach, Runway 36, welcome back. Note that we have been cleared for approach to Runway 36, and the Approach Lighting System, or ALS, will be activated. Now that we know which runway we will be using, we can look up the relevant approach chart, which is ILS Runway 36. The TACAN frequency for Runway 36 is 75 X-ray. The ILS frequency is 110.3 and the localizer is 356 degrees. It's assumed that we have flown the DME arc instrument approach procedure to reach Dulop fix. The elevation view at the bottom of the chart displays the height at which the approach should be flown, from the initial approach fix or IIF at Wolf to the outer marker at Rocky and the final approach. The minima section lists the minimum requirement for transitioning to a visual landing. In this case, an ILS approach using localizer and glide slope requires the runway to be in sight no lower than 210 feet on glide slope. If the glide slope is not in operation and only the localizer is active, minimum altitude to transition to a visual landing is 460 feet. Note the increased altitude requirement should ALS not be in operation. Reduce power to lower airspeed below 305 knots before reaching Viper which is 10 miles from runway 36. To use ILS, we first enter ILS frequency and course information on the TACAN ILS page. To view the TACAN ILS page, press ICP1. To enter the TACAN frequency, use the ICP keys to enter 75 and press ICP enter. If the Yankee band rather than X-ray is displayed, press ICP0 and enter. To enter the ILS frequency, enter 1103 and press ICP Enter. ILS red localizer and glide slope flags will appear on the Attitude Director Indicator, or ADI, if the frequency entered is incorrect. Once the frequency has been entered, the course field is automatically selected. To enter the localizer course for runway 36, Enter 356 and press ICP Enter. The command steering option is then highlighted. 
This functions as a flight director and will indicate optimal intercept of the ILS localizer and glide slope on the hood. If desired, you may turn it off with ICP M cell zero. At the top right of the TACAN ILS page is the ILS power notification. ILS is powered with the ILS knob on the Audio 2 panel. To make ILS navigation active, turn the instrument mode knob to TACAN ILS. ILS symbology will then be displayed on the hood and ADI. Turn the course knob on the HSI to enter the localizer course. Note that the distance in miles indicated relates to the active TACAN. If NAV ILS instrument mode is used, distance to the active steer point is indicated. The landing light should be turned on. Return to the CNI page by pressing DCS left and press DCS right to display wind speed and direction. Localizer and glide slope indicators have appeared on the hood. An indicator may be dashed if it's outside parameters. As we are approaching the glide slope from below, it will probably be dashed until we begin to meet it. The command steering queue is also visible. Place the flight path marker, or FPM, on the command steering queue to correct for the optimal approach. At Viper, 10 miles from the runway, and with airspeed below 305 knots, lower the landing gear with the G key and open the speed brake using the B key. Note that the aircraft begins to meet the glide slope from below. Morning, Goblin 21, Kunshan Tower, cleared for landing, runway 36, check gear down. When the runway is in sight, we can continue with a visual approach and landing, as described in the previous tutorial.
I hope you enjoyed this look at ILS. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you again for the next Falcon 4 BMS video.